In this video, we're going to take a look at polynomial regression. We've already taken a look at polynomial regression uh, briefly earlier, but uh, now we'll dig a little bit deeper. Um, I'm going to, of course, call the library, uh, uh, the Fairway Library, um, and uh, pull the, the savings data, um, call it data, and attach data. So I don't have to keep typing data all the time. Um, I'm going to build three models and compare them. One is just going to be um, this SR variable uh, versus DDPI, okay? Just a plain Jane linear model. And then I'm going to also build a quadratic model, okay? When I um, uh, type like this, okay, what what I'm going to what it's going to do is build a um, a polynomial degree uh, degree two model or a par parabolic model. Okay, for SR in terms of this DDPI uh, variable. So I'll have a, a, a coefficient, a, a, an intercept term that is, and a, uh, and a slope term, and then a, uh, a term on this DDPI squared val uh, variable. Okay. I'm also going to make a cubic model. Okay, and I'll call this one out three. Okay, out three. And this model will have uh, four terms in it. It'll have a, a, a vertical intercept coefficient, it'll have a slope coefficient, it'll have a coefficient on, on, the, uh, on the squared term, and I'll have a coefficient on this cubic term. Okay, um, of course if we, if we just do um, summary out, by summary I mean the, the 1M summary, uh, uh, summary out one, summary out two, summary out three, we can quickly see our our estimates. Okay, for out one, remember that that, that term is going to have, or that, that model is going to have two terms. One is our our intercept, and this is our, our slope, and here are our p-values. Sorry, they're down here because I have my window too small. Let me, uh, let me redo those. There we go. Get the, the p-values over here in the right place. And um, yeah, okay. So they uh, so here it looks like the the intercept term might be um, significant, and and probably the the DDPI coefficient is also significant um, for my parabolic or quad quadratic model. It looks like my intercept term is significant, and um, and also my my uh, DDPI variable uh, coefficient is significant. And uh, and also the square term is significant at uh, about the 1.3, 1.4% 1 significance level. When I get to the uh, the cubic model, you can see that suddenly things have changed, right? Suddenly adding in this uh, this higher order term there in the cubic model, um, uh, all my p-values are there's they've all come up a good bit. My intercept term is still pretty significant I think it's uh, you know down under three percent but the other p-values have have gone up um, so that is clearly one way to, to compare these models based on the p-values of the for the t-tests for the significance of the coefficients in fact in this case it, it looks like what 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 these three models are suggesting is perhaps that the quadratic model is the best one of the three because it's it's a it's a higher it's sort of the highest order model where all of these p values are sort of still statistically significant so now you might look at this then and think well um you know what maybe maybe this uh maybe we just maybe we only need this squared term what happens if we throw out um the just the ddpi variable and you know just ran um just did uh did a, where is it oops right just did uh, sr versus i of ddpi squared okay um well that's that's generally kind of frowned upon um we want to stick to what we call hierarchical models models um and that is um typically is a is a rule of thumb you if if you include a, a, a an nth degree term in your in your polynomial model then you want to include all of the lower order terms in your model to see the effect that this uh, that doing something like that can have, um, consider that uh, you know in in your book there in Fairway he says um, consider taking a 
consider uh, shifting that DDPI variable by 10 units, okay? Um, subtracting 10, that is, from, from that variable. And um, I'm going to call my new, I'm going to make a new data frame, okay, called mod savings for modified savings. Um, it's going to be the data frame of savings, but uh, that uh, I'm going to call a new variable uh, MDDPI for modified DDPI is is the the savings dollar sign DDPI variable is shifted by 10 okay and then I'm gonna um, uh, go and make this linear model and, and just get the summary in fact I'll get the 1m summary okay get the short one 1m summary of the output of the linear model for SR versus the modified DDPI uh, plus that squared term there and um, and see what happens Okay, look, now you can see that I've, what I want to do is compare the output of this quadratic model with the output of the original one, summary 1M of out 2, right? Okay, so, so this is our modified one. Uh, look at what happens when, when I shift all these, these horizontal variables, that is our, our predictor variables, by, by 10 units, suddenly this, this what we could call it maybe the, the, the slope coefficient or the, the, the linear bottle coefficient. Um, uh, it, it, it was, um, in the previous model, it was significant. We, the previous model sort of said, yeah, include it. By shifting it, now suddenly it says, no, 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 it's, it's insignificant, throw it out. Okay, so this is not a good thing. This is not a good thing. We we want that um, uh, that by sh making these shifts, um, that is, it it doesn't matter where your where your data sort of sit it, along one dimensional line. If they sit to the left or to the right, um, if if they have a slope to them, they should you know your your model output should should suggest to keep a, a slope in there, not to throw it out. So. So that's the reason why it it, it, it can appear sometimes that uh, maybe you want to throw out lower order uh, terms or lower or, or coefficients on lower order terms, but in reality you want to keep them in. So again, the the general rule of thumb is if if it's if you keep a if you put a higher order term coefficient in there, keep all the lower order ones. So if if you've got an x to the fifth um, in your model. You know, if you've got a predictor variable raised to the fifth power, then then also can, you need to include the the terms like x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the tooth, x to the oneth. Okay, and of course your intercept. Now Fairway also says if he says if if you do remove lower order terms from a quadratic model, for example, um, or any model, then, then it has some kind of special meaning. Um, but if you consider the throwing out um, lower order terms from the quadratic model, what this says is that you're setting that slope coefficient equal to, um, or well, for example, if setting the intercept to zero means that the regression passes through the origin. Um, but uh, setting the linear term to zero would mean that the response is optimized at a predictor value of zero. Okay, I'm reading that straight from, from his book. You can see that if you look at this little Excel program that I've written up. Um, this is called quadratic regression or something. Here's, a, here's some fictitious data point pattern. It looks like it's parabolic in nature. It should have a quadratic um, model fit to it maybe. And, and you can see that I've got, uh, you know, here down here in the bottom, I've got my quadratic model, okay? This number is my A number, okay? Okay, what happens to a parabola when you change the when you change that leading coefficient there, uh, the one on the the x squared val value? It it goes like that, right? What happens if you turn it from negative to positive? Suddenly it goes from concave down to concave up, right? Um, uh, what does what does C do? Uh, C just moves the parabola up and down, right? That's just the, the, the constant, okay? Changes where it hits the, the vertical axis. What does B do? Well, it does this funny thing. I don't really know. It just sort of swings it around or whatever. Hey, wh what if B goes to zero? That is, what if in our uh, quadratic model, if we set B equal to zero, um, 
So that's So setting b equal to 0 is equivalent to saying that the the, the maximum of that um, of our quadratic model is achieved or minimum whatever the whatever the the optimal is here whatever the um, uh, global extreme there is um, it occurs when the predictor variable value equals 0 okay another way to see that is simply write out the the equation of a quadratic say uh, f of x equals a x squared plus b times x plus c. Okay, then differentiate that with respect to x. Set it equal to zero, and you, you'll see that that occurs uh, when uh, x equals negative b over two a. All right, and so what happens when um, uh, you know if if uh, uh, if b is set to zero, then x equals zero. Okay, so okay. And uh, before I forget, uh, w let's make some plots. Okay, let's. Um, sometimes uh, it's it's all it's awfully useful to to take a look at some some plots of these guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna plot um, uh, something. What is this? I'm gonna plot my data set, my original data set. Okay, I'm getting out of that shifted uh, data set. My original data set, I'm going to plot, and I'm also going to do all this funny stuff, which you can you can figure out. Um, uh, I'm going to plot a curve there, too. Okay, I'm actually plotting the curve. You have to plot the curve first, or it won't work. So I'm plotting the curve, and then I'm dropping the points on there. So I'm doing this differently. I'm not using the the, the typical plot function there. And I know that I'm going to make three plots. So I'm going to have I'm going to make um, I'm going to partition my graph window into three columns and one row, so that I can uh, I can plot these three different models uh, a straight. A uh, straight line model, a polynomial or a, a quadratic model, and also a cubic model. Okay, so uh, these are my original data. Here's a, a simple linear regression. Okay, I can also um, um, make a. Uh, uh, I'll make a quadratic model. You can see, it goes like that. Hey, that's pretty good. That's not bad, right? You can see how that that sort of uh, it, it seems to fit the data a little bit better, maybe. Okay, um, I could also try to get uh, an even better fit using a poly uh, using a quad uh, pff, whatever it is three cubic duh model cubic model. There we go. Okay, um, but what's the difference between these two? Not a lot. In fact, I'm not sure I can really detect a difference just by looking. Okay, if I can't, it's, it's very, very slight. I don't know that I can. So there's really nothing to be gained model-wise by going to these higher order terms. It looks like, uh, at least in this case. Okay, so that can be another indication that that you're sort of, um, uh, the, you know, these higher order uh, terms. You just don't need them in there. Okay, so let's talk about orthogonal polynomials. Um, uh, so what does it mean for vectors to be orthogonal? Well, essentially it sort of means that they're, well, they're perpendicular, right? And two vectors are perpendicular if their dot product is equal to zero, right? Which is the sum of the products of their components, right? It's the sum of the products of their components. Well, remember that the integral is sort of a generalized sum, right? So what's it mean for two functions to be orthogonal? Two different functions are going to be orthogonal if the integral of their product is zero. Okay, so that's the main idea. Or if you take the, uh, uh, yeah. So so that's 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 the idea. Now it turns out that um, uh, uh, using orthogonal prop pol uh, bleh, using orthogonal polynomials has a couple of benefits um, you can read about them in your book there and see what fairway has to say but the the the, the, the main idea is if, if if you do like what we've done previously um, 
up here, it, it can you can see how it could quickly become tedious when you're trying to figure out um, how many higher order terms to select. You you might have you might build a 10 or a 20 degree uh, polynomial model and then start um, hacking off the higher order terms um, in order and just start checking the you know see what happens to the p values before you finally land on a model that you're satisfied with. That's time consuming. Also, it turns out that that these that the that these algorithms for computing the least squares coefficients can can become uh, sort of the, well problem it can be problematic in the cases of uh, collinearity when it may be it may take a really really long time to invert a matrix or or, or something and um, uh, so these uh, anyway these these algorithms can become numerically unstable and orthogonal polynomials kind of help with that um, so uh, here's how you can you can implement that in it's the poly command poly command um, I'm going to build a linear model okay again I'm gonna um, uh, regress SR versus but this time I'm gonna re use regress it onto poly of that variable that I'm interested in and it's gonna be if I'm gonna make a uh, fourth degree polynomial model okay and um, I'm using the savings data okay and um, and I'll take a look at the summary of L mod okay so this is this is sort of an indication right here if you look at these um, one two three fourth degree okay you can see that the, the p values are pretty small here and here and then when you jump to the third and fourth degrees suddenly the p-values are large or they're at least they're not small anymore okay so this is this can be an indication of where you can um, where you might want to uh, call it call an end to your search for higher order terms okay okay let's take a look at one more thing and then I'll cut you loose uh, Response surfaces. Uh, response surfaces. Uh, what is? What the heck is that? It's just a surface. It's a fancy word for surface. It's a fancy two-term term for two-word term for surface. Um, in statistics, it's often used uh, to indicate polynomials with interaction terms. That is, terms with like uh, you know uh, that, that have a product of predictor variable values there, like x1 times x2. Um, in experimental design, we use the the term response surface methodology to uh, talk about optimizing things in statistics. Um, so, uh, so let's. Um, I'm just gonna tell you what. I'm just gonna copy Faraway's code there and drop it into R and see what happens. Okay. Not even gonna explain it there, because well, let me let me turn this off try that again okay there we go what's that this is our response variable okay this uh, savings rate is our response variable this is population under 15 and this is growth okay you can see that this is not a planar model um, sure it would be nice if you could click and drag and rotate this to get a better look at it but yeah, um, so this is a plot of a response surface model. Look at what's going on here in the code. You can see that I'm, I'm making a linear model, um, r uh, plotting uh, the savings rate versus poly m. Okay, that's the that's the function for when when, when you when you want to make a response surface um, model. And I'm going to use as my predictor variables. Pop 15, that is the percentage of the population that's under 15, and DDPI. So I've got one, two predictor variables, okay, and I'm going to use the, the the highest degree will be two. So it will be a um, it'll be a quadratic model, but it's also going to include the interaction terms. So what terms are going to be in this model? It's going to look like SR equals some constant plus some other coefficient times ddpi plus some other coefficient times pop 15 plus some coefficient times the product of these two plus some other coefficient 
times pop 15 squared plus some of the coefficient times ddpi squared okay it's these models will be hierarchical um, by by default that is it'll they will include all it, they'll include the interaction terms as well as um, uh, all of the, the the lower degree terms that are possible okay now all the rest of this stuff is just so that uh, is so that we can make a make a plot we're using these special functions in here so that so that we can we, we can get a nice visual picture of, of all that but if I took it look at the 1m summary of L mod I'll see exactly what my model is there um, you can see um, this is indicating this is indicating that uh, this is my um, uh, vertical intercept estimate 9.61971 Okay, and then this number right here is the coefficient against my what? What do you think this is indicating? Uh, pop 15 by itself. See the 1.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0.2. This one means this one, this one raised to the one. Okay. This two means this one raised to the tooth, okay, squared, okay. This one means take this one to the first. One and one means take this one times that one. So, so this this is the term on the interaction. This is the coefficient on the interaction term. Negative fifty three point six one six six zero times pop fifteen times DDPI, and then also you've got a uh, the two here with the zero here. That means don't include this one and this so you have a term that looks like uh, DDPI squared okay this is the coefficient on that DDPI squared term and of course here are your p-values um, again my output looks strange like this uh, uh, simply because um, my window is is resized um, it's just sized differently okay